Welcome to r slash entitled people where this Karen gets completely destroyed at a funeral She tries to interrupt Karen gets shut down at a funeral My mum died in 2011 right around the time that my paternal aunt cookie was left by her husband after beating cancer for a third time Now my aunt is very physically changed from all the chemo and radiation She had gained a lot of weight, lost most of her hair, and had aged a bit faster due to a lack of hormones from having every trace of womanhood cut from her body. I have extreme anxiety, stemming from agoraphobia. So my aunt Cookie was my safe place for the duration of the whole event, which lasted several days. This consisted of everyone being at my parents' summer house in Mexico, basically standing around, chatting, drinking, and eating everything in sight. This funeral had every family member, plus people who were aunts and uncles that I'd never met in my life. Not being a drinker and not knowing a lot of the people walking around, my aunt and I sat down to have a cigarette each and catch up on our lives and whatnot. Suddenly, while we're mid-sentence in her cancer update, a Karen that I'd never set eyes on in my life starts loudly going, ugh, She swats at the air like our cigarette smoke is even anywhere near her and makes a big fuss. Karen says, Oh, that is so disgusting. How can you behave in such a disgusting manner at a funeral? I reply, My mum was a smoker, so she'd approve. What? She was your mother? She didn't teach her daughter how to be a lady, I see. And you, talking to my aunt, you should know better. What do you have to say for yourself? Smoking in front of this child. I was 33 years old. My aunt Cookie takes off her sad cancer hat and strokes the small tuft of hair she had left in the front and booming her voice, but not yelling, says, for all to hear, what's it gonna do? Give me cancer? Karen looked uncomfortable after the hat came off, but still managed to look insulted and walked away. I could hear the internal re here. After a millisecond of silence, I giggle snorted and laughed until my sides hurt. Everyone else in the room just kind of smiled, though I think I heard a few snickers. I asked my aunt, who was she? My aunt said, I don't know, some weirdo that probably came for the free food. My aunt rocks. She's been in remission since 2012. Oh man, there we go. What a way to start an episode. Your aunt is an absolute beast. I'm sorry. Imagine the look on this Karen's face as she takes off her hat and just goes, so what? I don't care. I've beaten cancer three times. It's amazing, by the way, that she's been in remission since 2012, that she's still going on. I mean, like, fair play. The strength, the, the patience, I don't know, just, just the courage to continue to go through that. Chemo after chemo, probably most likely, but yeah. It, it all go well and, and she be okay now. It's pretty crazy, so fair play to her. And as for this Karen, I mean, come on. These guys are adults. They can choose if they want to smoke or not. It's not your business. You don't even know them. Now for our next entitled people story. Entitled guest thought money could get him anything. So I live on the big island of Hawaii. And last year I was working at a local resort doing concierge. Most of the job was helping people figure out what they want to do while on vacation like snorkeling, guided hiking tours, helicopter rides, etc. One afternoon, I was approached by a guy who wanted to take a tour to the Captain Cook Monument, which is known for having great snorkeling, but is only accessible by a steep and fairly grueling hike, or by boats or kayak tour through a permitted company, of which there are only a few. He wanted to go that day or the day after, and I explained that unfortunately, all of the tours were fully booked. Unfazed and without pause, he tells me to find him another boat. I explain that only certain boats are allowed to be in that area and all of them were full. He insisted though that I get on the phone and start calling anyone I could who had a boat that he could pay to take him there. And he kept saying, money isn't an issue, just find me a boat. I calmly explained again that that was not possible or legal and that no local boat captain would risk losing their license to take him there. Exasperated, he finally gave up on the boat and started asking about other tours. At this point, I mentioned that one of my favorite local tours is for stargazing on Mauna Kea. I know I've pronounced that incorrectly, but please, Hawaiian locals or people that know, comment down below, correct me, thanks. I told him all about the incredible sunset views and absolutely breathtaking stars and that you go up in a nice van with about 14 other people. 
He was interested in going up the mountain but didn't want to be around other people or be on a tour for eight or so hours so he tells me to call the helicopter companies and find him one that will fly him up there for a private star show. I begin explaining that the mountain is restricted airspace due to the observatories at the top and that even if it wasn't, that not only can the local helicopters not safely make it to 14,000 feet in altitude, but none of those companies do stargazing tours because they aren't trained for it and don't have the equipment. Again, he tells me to just call around and find him a pilot willing to take him up there and again starts repeating that money isn't an issue. I once again calmly explain, while shrieking like a banshee internally, that no pilot is going to risk the loss of their license as well as fines and jail time for taking him up there. Finally, he throws up his hands and says, fine, I guess I'll just go to the beach then. Like, yeah, dude, I feel so sorry that you left planning your vacation activities until you were on vacation. Clearly have issues being told no, and now your only option is to enjoy a stunning beach in one of the most beautiful places in the world. God, I hate rich people. Oh my God, I just, yeah, absolutely despise this sort of person. Just because you've got money doesn't mean that you can have access to do whatever you want. It just, it's just not how the world works. It's just annoying that people like this have lots of money and just feel entitled to be able to say and do things like this. It's just insane. There's literal legal reasons as to why money doesn't matter in this situation and you cannot do this thing. Yet they don't get it. How dumb are they? And yeah, again, I completely agree. Now your only option is to enjoy a stunning beach in one of the most beautiful places in the world. It's not as if it's a bad thing, is it? Goodness me. The audacity to say, fine, I guess I'll just go and enjoy the beach then. Yeah, you will. My sister-in-law got a new engagement and wedding band, and it's the exact same one as mine. My sister-in-law copied my engagement ring, and I'm trying not to get angry. My sister-in-law has always hated me. From the moment I got with my now husband, her husband's twin, she has always hated me. The first thing she ever said to me was that I'm the longest lasting girlfriend. And since that day, there's been this weird unspoken competition where she's always trying to belittle me, making me feel small and insecure. At first it used to work, but now it just angers me. She's bragged about seeing my husband, boyfriend at the time, naked before. She's made comments about my sister's marriage unnecessarily. She's just jealous or something and has always said something to demean me. She goes and changes into outfits that match mine and literally copies me in everything. Well, me and my husband got married recently and he bought me a new ring because of our new journey in life as we'd grown so much. And then today I went to my mother-in-law's house to celebrate someone's birthday and she's here with my husband's twin. I look at her and she copied my ring. Exactly. My husband bought me a new five carat pear rose gold double halo ring and she has the exact same thing. I am so, so, so freaking angry. Also an added note, she also copied our other sister-in-law's engagement ring. My husband has seven brothers and the eldest got married first and then she did and she had the exact same ring as that girl too. So I know this behavior isn't random or a coincidence. I'm trying to contain myself because it's not a big deal and it's just materialistic things, but I'm fuming and I'm so annoyed. I literally don't want to talk to her at all on this trip. So should I confront her or just leave it alone? Yeah, now this is just extremely weird. And to be honest with you, over the history of my channel and having read a lot of stories about people like this, this is not a kind of new occurrence i want to say an individual like this in one of these stories on these entitled subreddits she's just i don't know got so much wrong with her so much jealousy we don't know why because obviously there's not a lot of context to outside what we've been given but it's just clear that she is a terrible terrible person and i don't really know what her agenda is what she's trying to do what she's trying to achieve but yeah just a horrible person that sadly is a part of your life all i can say is just try and ignore her as much as possible every little thing that she does to try and irk you or get under your skin whether it's dressing like you or having the same engagement ring made or wedding ring or whatever it is just ignore it and by doing that and not giving her any fuel to add to her stupid fire it will just drive her crazy 
trust me i think that's the only thing you can do here lady gets a ticket after people kindly warned her this one is from a few months ago but it's still gold there's an intersection by my work that connects two main roads east to west and north to south when you come to this intersection from any direction you won't be able to turn left there's signs everywhere telling you no turning left easy right well no not easy living in that town and going to work where i work for almost a decade i've seen so many people turn left people usually just honk and swear but this time there was a cop waiting to go through east this lady pulls up in a nice cadillac she's coming from the south and goes to turn you guessed it left now people see the cop they know that her getting pulled over will slow down traffic as it's a two-lane street so panic ensues honking yelling some swearing one guy on the street says lady don't turn left there's a cop don't turn left don't turn left like a freaking charm everyone together this lady rolls down her window the rest of the way at this point she is mid intersection going to turn left the cop is shaking his head no bro looked like he was on lunch and he was fuming like he's close enough that i can see the sandwich bag in his car the lady though yells out and i'll never forget i can do whatever the frick i want to i will do whatever i want and if i want to turn left i'm freaking turning left i don't care and left she goes the cop looks down lunchtime has been interrupted his windows may have been closed but you can tell when someone yells the f word he turns around and puts his lights on of course she pulled over she can do whatever she wants till the cops are there oh i mean come on woman everybody there is telling you not to do something they're all trying to help you but no i guess that is the definition of entitlement you feel entitled to do whatever you want and um yeah you pay the repercussions because you deserve them like come on even the cop is pretty much chanting saying please don't do it i'm eating my sandwich man just play by the rules like everyone else does or the majority of people try to at least everyone's trying to help you but no i'm gonna have to pull you over here i'm gonna have to do my job and um yeah nobody really wanted that to happen apart from you it seemed it's just instant karma of the highest accord and one thing is for sure never never interrupt a cop on their lunchtime that is a sure fire way to get a ticket now for our next entitled people story my aunt felt entitled to my money at the beginning of the year i decided to move across the country and change career what i'd not anticipated was that due to stupid french insurance laws they cover agencies and homeowners for unpaid rent only if the renter is a student not workers in training i couldn't find anywhere to live my aunt was living less than an hour away from where i would work so i called her she was about to move away from her old apartment and apparently didn't have enough room for me in her new place so she offered to keep renting her old place while i finish my probation period and then once i'm able to rent i'll move out or rent the place myself but it came with a condition i had to pay her the entire caution in case i break anything and i had to buy her the kitchen she'd installed and several other pieces of furniture because it was a pain to move it I also had to only have moving boxes no furniture myself i had to argue to let me have a freaking fridge i moved in and stayed for the three months probation then i decided that i prefer to live near my job and move out i cleaned my aunt's apartment i moved my things out and the furniture she sold me except for the kitchen and left now because i was here illegally i had no choice in that my name was never on the contract but i still paid my aunt rent every month I believed that she would receive the entire caution back and give it to me. Plus, she said she would try to resell the kitchen to the new renters and that would allow, again, me to have some money back. But she texted me yesterday that she'll only receive 30% of the caution back. Here are the reasons. She lost the key and it has to be replaced. I insist she lost a key. Charges to pay and then also garbage taxes. Here is the kicker. Those are the charges for the entire year, but I was only there for three months. Yet still, she is making me pay the entire tax. I wouldn't mind paying them for the three months I stayed, but I find the entire year to be exaggerated. Plus, I didn't lose the key, she did, and still it's up to me to pay? 
Her reason was, we agreed I would only give you the money that the agency is giving me back. I'm screwed because I was there illegally, so I don't have a leg to stand on. I'll just remember to never trade with that aunt again. Well, although I, I see your point, OP, that you don't have a leg to stand on because you were there illegally, you can do other things, right? You can, for example, tell your entire family about how your aunt treated you, what she made you do, and how much money she made you pay, when in reality, that was her caution. That was that was what she had to pay. Well, at the minimum, nine months, but probably more, given, as you said, she was the one who lost the key. So, yeah, I think that there's nothing you can do financially in terms of that money is gone. But tell your family, tell everyone, make people understand what your aunt did and, and that your aunt is a bad person. Just to clear up some things as well, I'll put this on screen, actually. Um, people are asking in the comments, if OP was there illegally, isn't your aunt the one that's liable? So do nothing. It's on her to fix, not you. But then someone has replied that the aunt is shorting them on the payback. There's nothing owed to the landlord. OP clears things up though. Yeah, I don't know if it's the same in the USA, but in France, you have to pay a caution when you rent a place. And when you leave, if anything is broken because of you, part of that money isn't returned. Okay, so in England, we call that a deposit then. That makes sense. To assure my aunt I was coming in good faith, I paid her the caution before arriving. I really had no choice and she took advantage of that. I see, it all makes sense. Very sad. But there we go. Anyway, guys, that is going to do it for this one. Really hope you enjoyed these five entitled people stories. If you did, let me know down below. Which one was your favorite? Which person in this entire episode was the most entitled? Get your comments in. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, hit the follow button, drop a like on this one, and I'll see you guys all tomorrow for some more Reddit stories.